Baseball fans, we are here for a night of high school baseball between the Pleasant Grove Hawks and the Paris Wildcats. Both of these teams looking for a W tonight to get them back to the 500 for their record. And uh, I don't think either, either one of these teams uh, assumed that this uh, first district game would uh, lead to having a uh, losing record. Yeah, no, definitely a slow start for both sides. Uh, but, I mean, tough competition in tournament play, that's what you want to see, though. At the same time, continuing to make yourself better for uh, deeper down the line and uh, continuing to make yourself better even if it might not look that way on a record. Yeah, Pleasant Grove coming in, winning the last four games. And uh, so that has propelled Pleasant Grove to uh, getting close to that winning record. But it's all a new game right now, or new season. Um, district starts today. And so I expect to uh, see both of these teams uh, vying for one of the top uh, three uh, spots. And uh, so we're going to take the time here to go ahead and go over these lineups. We've got Paris being introduced right now. Go, Blake. For Paris, we got number three, Juan Garcia, starting off, leading off with the catcher. Number five, Blake Walker, going to be your left fielder. Number 10, Jack Brazil, shortstop. Number one, Hudson Harper, third base. Number seven, Tyler Day, center field. Number 20, Stephen Langley, uh, designated hitter. Number nine, uh, Keaton Adamson, second baseman. Number eight, Chase Lamb, first baseman. Number six, Pedro Mata as your right fielder. And number 11, Keller Limbaugh will be pitching and not hitting. Yeah, Limbaugh actually uh, had a 3.8 ERA last year and 44 Ks. So uh, look to uh, see him to pitch around the strike zone tonight. And that may be something that uh, Pleasant Grove is eager, eager to look at, uh, possibly put some balls into play. And uh, looking at uh, Pleasant Grove's offense, it's been – on the little short side here uh, this year so far, averaging j around 3.62 runs per game and uh, definitely going to require a few more runs than that if they're going to uh, extend some district runs like they have in the past. Yeah, definitely a, a time where you, in, in, er, in non-district play and early in tournament play, you kind of get to figure out your lineup a little bit more. You get to see, uh, see who you want day in and day out, those Tuesday and Friday nights uh, here in district. And so... Um, we're going to kind of see that here tonight. We're going to start off with uh, not your ace on the mound. We're going to see Walker Wright actually pitching tonight for the Hawks. But uh, still, nonetheless, we're going to see a pretty relative uh, starting lineup uh, like we will see most season from the Hawks. Start with number two, Brenton, Lo Brenton Clark will be a leadoff man at second base. Number four, Jarrett Halter is your shortstop. Number 19, Spencer Browning is your third baseman. Number 24, Cade Martin is your catcher. Number six, Jace Elrod in center field. Number 21, Landon West in left field. Number 23, Buck Anderson, your designated hitter. Number 10, Walker Wright, your pitcher. And number 28, Ty Boozer, your first baseman. And number one, Hunter Rose, playing right field, not hitting with a, uh, a hand injury. Yeah, and that has been one of the things that I, that I probably am going to put maybe some of the uh, – cohesiveness of this team. Uh, Hunter Rose going out and then um, you know a couple other players with injuries uh, can really, really sort of change that lineup and just the dynamic of, of playing with each other. But uh, I think uh, with, with both of these teams, they're going to forget about everything that has happened prior to tonight with this being the opening, opening of district play. Number 16. Wind is uh, negligible, and uh, temperature looks like it's going to – first pitch is going to be about 72 degrees. A few clouds in the skies, but do not expect any rain uh, tonight. And uh, looking forward to uh, temperatures dropping just below 70. Maybe it's about 68, 69 by the time that the game is over. All right, now we're going to take a break for the national anthem.
Let's go, Cat. Here we go. Get it started early. Let's go. We're going to get to see what uh, Mr. Wright is made up of here pretty soon. Cade Martin taking the responsibilities behind the plate and look for him to have uh, definitely senior leadership over this entire infield and outfield. I enjoy this. Enjoy this. And definitely one of the two vocal leaders uh, as, as far as uh, big time names in this infield go. Uh, him himself and Brenton Clark, uh, guys that are going to definitely look to lead the way for the Hawks the rest of the year as well. well Walker Wright comes in uh, so far this season, pitched uh, 13.2 innings and uh, has seven strikeouts and eight walks and has given up 13 earned runs. So his ERA is sitting right at 4.1 and uh, comes in uh, looking to uh, increase that strikeout number and reduce those, those walks. But the good thing about uh, Walker is the uh, offense that he has playing behind him with Browning and Halter, Clark and Boozer. Um, I think I would feel pretty confident with those four behind me and being willing to at least put the ball in play and allowing my teammates to uh, take care of me. And then the speed in the outfield is what I think is uh, going to be a difference maker in a few few of these district matches with Elrod being out in center field, Hunter Rose in right field, and then Landon West in left. So speed out in the outfield. Uh, could possibly see some acrobatic catches out there with uh, with their speed chasing down balls that you think would get down. So we've got number three, Juan Garcia, up to bat. Plays catcher for the Wildcats. First pitch, maybe a little bit outside. And that is going to be the first strike of district play there. One and one count. Foul ball taking the count to one and two. So Wright is now ahead in the count. See what he uh, chooses to pitch. Probably nothing that's uh, going to be down the pipe for sure. A little high, trying to get him to chase. Evens the count up at two and two. Right here. Hey, find a way on, Swabby. Find a way on, Swabby. Hey. And a swing and a miss for out number one. Walker Wright adds to that strikeout total. So now we've got Blake Walker, number five left fielder, up to bat for Paris Wildcats. Digging in at the front of the batter's box. A little off-speed pitch in there for a strike. Got two Wildcats in a row that Walker has been ahead in the count. He gets to throw what he wants. And it looks like we have a ball that was just foul. So that's going to bring the batter back where we have an 0 and 2 count. Blake Walker really going down low to uh, catch that ball and loop it just out the fair play on the right field side. Wide stance here and another swing and a miss. Walker Wright Go Jack. having a career game. Two batters in a row. Swing and miss Kays. So Jack Brazil coming up to bat. <coughs> Number 10 for Paris. No, no. A little off speed pitch. Stays a little high. Good eye by Brazil there, leaving that pitch alone. 
A little heat coming in for strike one. Evens up the count, one and one. Brazil batted 313 last year with a 425 on base percentage. And a foul ball to the right side. No harms, right, no cars one, are harmed. Her position for Walker right here. Go. Just to go one, two, three. And once again, ahead in the count. Tip foul catch, so we've got three up, three down with three strikeouts by Walker hey, Wright. Go, let's go. We'll take this to commercial. We'll be back at the bottom of the inning. We are excited to announce here at Texarkana Emergency Center and Hospital that we have expanded our capabilities to better serve our community. As a hospital, we have the capability for inpatient services. After your outstanding emergency care, we can smoothly transition you into one of our new inpatient rooms that have telemetry monitors in every room to continue your concierge medicine care. While our patients continue receiving their care in their inpatient suites, we also make sure that your loved ones are taken care of with our outstanding facilities. Our added services include a procedure room and also the capability of MRIs. With our imaging, we are able to offer outpatient, inpatient, and emergency room, MRI, CT, ultrasound, and x-ray. We are honored by your support and look forward to serving all your future medical needs. Gonna have a real quick uh, possible wardrobe change by uh, Paris. Pitcher was wearing, I think, something white as far as like a wristband or something, and umpires have asked that to be removed. got Keller Limbaugh going to be pitching for the Paris Wildcats here. Keller Limbaugh comes in with 12 and a third innings pitched, allowed nine hits, four earned runs, has 28 strikeouts so far in the season, a 2-2-7 ERA, and only allowing a sub-200 batting average. So pretty good start for him. Uh, almost can't ask for better, to be honest. No, that 28 strikeouts on 12 innings pitched is uh, pretty stout, uh, considering uh, I think there's only, what, uh, about 36 outs in those yeah. 12 innings. And, I mean, seven, only seven walks. I mean, very good strikeout to walk ratio. Yeah, I'll be interested to see because I do not remember much about him from last year, but he had 44 Ks all year last year. He has 28. Yeah. We're not even into uh, district play Five, until tonight. Eight, so looking forward to this bat all year. Brenton Clark not bad. watches that first pitch for a ball. Steps back be in. Get ready. Get dirty. Nice, 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 easy delivery there. No urgency. Ties the count up at one and one with a foul strike. Britton dug in pretty deep into the batter's box. Waits on that pitch, but a little outside. Make the play. Limbaugh takes his time getting back set. Very, very wow. good pitch, but just a little bit outside there. Three balls and one strike. Get on base any way you can. Got this one popped straight up. Center field coming in. And Day does get underneath the ball for the first out of the inning. Hey, right there once, let's go. Go after him. let's go. So number four, Jarrett Halter playing shortstop tonight, steps in in the number two hole to face Limbaugh. Be hard, be ready. Standing more in the middle of the batter's box here. A little high and inside. Yeah. Lim 
Limbaugh with a good curveball there, giving a swinging halter to even up the count at one and one. One out here in the first inning. A little off-speed pitch sneaks in there with a strike. Jarrett Halter just not wanting to uh, pick that one out to swing at. A quick show to bunt, and the ball gets thrown behind him. Looking at two and two is the count. Halter actually squaring around just a little bit. A little gamesmanship most likely. I doubt bunting in a two-strike situation. Halter makes a good swing at that ball, but fouls it straight back. Looks like Limbaugh is ready to pitch. Ball's going to hit it. Yeah, off-speed pitch just uh, hangs on on the inside just a little bit longer. So Pleasant Grove gets their first runner in district play after a hit by pitch. Make a play. Let's go. Good first inning. Come on. And so that's going to bring up third base, Spencer Browning, to try to uh, move Halter into scoring position. Let's see what Coach Fincher has called here. Halter does have a little speed. Uh, Spencer swinging on that first pitch. A little low, but just looking to uh, move Halter to second and third here. Strike two called. Spencer electing not to swing at that one. He's a little low in his book. Looks like Halter may be taking a little extra step here. Nice pitch. Yeah. Another good pitch by Limbaugh. Spencer just fouls that off to uh, stay alive. Ball moving quick here. Halter off. Off speed pitch. Throw, but no play. Halter hey, don't be with a there. stolen base. Go. go get your batter. Now we've got one ball and two strikes. Runner in scoring position. Halter speed, anything in the outfield should bring him in. Foul ball by about a base width. Spencer getting around quick on Limbaugh's pitch there. Count remains one and two, one out. Change it up, JC. Jared Halter, number four, on second base in scoring position. Looks like the sun has officially set. Another rip down the left field line, but foul. Spencer just needs to get a little timing. Now you're good, battle, let's go. And uh, Brazil looking to uh, get the ball hit at him as Spencer's able to straighten that out just a little bit. Good eye on the pitch, a little low and outside. As Halter returns to second base. Second baseman coming over a little bit to cover, but Jarrett taking a big lead. Oh, pretty pitch. Another ball. Takes it to a full count. So Spencer may be getting a pitch here that he can really turn on. If he can keep it between the white lines. Your runner look. May give Halter an opportunity to score here. Limbaugh for the pitch. That is going to be two hit by pitch in a row. Limbaugh sort of uh, his own worst enemy so far, putting the uh, two Hawk batters in a row on base with two hit by pitch. Hey, give us the ground ball. Let's and go. Uh, bringing Let's up go. Uh, the number four hitter, Cade Martin. And 
looking to uh, see what type of damage he can make with Jarrett still in court scoring position. So definitely swinging the big bat. Wind is in his favor, nice. blowing out to center field. High pitch there for the first ball. See what Cade can do here with uh, being ahead in the count. Off speed yes, pitch there for a strike. Cade Martin just not wanting to uh, take advantage of that one Make and drive play. that pitch. Looks like both Hawk runners are uh, taking pretty good leads here. Hoffer takes an extra hit hop. Yes, sir! And a little slow coming off the uh, base, and the halter gets thrown Jesse. out. Two down, two by down. Garcia, and uh, looking at last Get year, it. Garcia actually caught 21 runners stealing. Wow. Get out. Nice job, so we still have a hawk in uh, scoring position because we did have a double steal there. And a soft scoop into center field with the wind blowing off the fence. So off the green wall goes Cade Martin, and that does bring in the first score of the game for Pleasant Grove. Spencer Browning scoring all the way from second base with Cade Martin's double off the wall. Beautiful hit by Cade. Just kept sailing with that wind. Yeah, I'm going to guess that thing traveled about 360 feet. More, let's go. Based on those numbers on center field. Pleasant Grove putting in a Ready, little eight. faster runner. Five. Looks like Jay Selrod is. Uh, wait, no, that's. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, I had the wrong line. Yeah, Christian May out there is the uh, runner for Kate as he goes and puts his equipment on. And then Jay Selrod's the one up to bat. Very, very, very quick close. left hander. Got two outs. Third base is playing relatively even with the bag. Ball's had a couple of pitches that have uh, hit the dirt before they've gotten to the plate. Could come into play as far as a pass ball for Pleasant Grove. Jay Sarroyd's digging back in. Limbaugh taking his time out on the mound. Christian May getting a good lead there. He's got a called strike. Jay Selride's just looking for his pitch. So we got three and one for Jay Selride. Looking for a pitch to drive. And a little low, so we have Hawks on first and second once again. So we've got left fielder Landon West coming up to see what he can do to add to this one-run lead that Pleasant Grove has in the first inning. Hey, two out. Let's go. Got you plenty got of uh, Hawk fans on the fence of knowledge lined up on the left field. Very slow off-speed pitch, a little high Three, for Landon Three. West. Good to see the early crowds coming out to uh, support these players tonight. Ball with the pitch. Nice. Fastball tip, but caught. So one and one count here for Landon West. Oh, We've got a foul ball in fair territory. Limbaugh coming up. Calls off his first baseman for the third out of the inning. So Pleasant Grove leads after one inning, one to zero over the Paris Wildcats. We will go to another commercial break. Life is busy and we get it. 
The State Bank mobile app was designed to make banking more convenient for you. Check account activity, make transfers, pay bills, and manage your debit card in a snap. You can deposit checks from the convenience of your home or wherever life lands you. The State Bank app lets you organize your accounts, manage alerts, and easily email our customer service experts. Now that you have State Bank at your fingertips, you can spend more time doing what's important to you. Your family, your bank, State Bank. Life is busy, and we get it. The State Bank mobile app was designed to make banking more convenient for you. Check account activity, make transfers, pay bills, and manage your debit card in a snap. You can deposit checks from the convenience of your home or wherever life lands you. The State Bank app lets you organize your accounts, manage alerts, and easily email our customers. We are short a camera, but we're going to uh, try to get that one back online. Actually, it looks like it may be back online. We had lost our center field camera. But Walker Wright back up to uh, pitch, where we have a strike one. And after the first inning, he had three Ks. Looks like Hudson Harper here to try to change that third baseman for the Wildcats. Takes a, another strike, so we've got Zero balls and two strikes. Walker Wright looking for his fourth strike out of the game. And we've got our first strikeout where we have watched the ball go by. So Walker Wright with his fourth K facing only four batters. In the fifth number five spot for Paris, Tyler Day center fielder number seven. Digs in deep in the batter's box and watches that first pitch low for a ball. Walker Wright looking very poised out there. Good pitch there on the inside, causing Day to at least pull back a little bit. Walker Wright attacking that low area of the plate there. Brings up uh, two balls and one strike. And the pitch. A swing and a miss, taking the count to two and two. Walker Wright still in command. Going after his fifth strikeout. Tyler Day digging in deep. Good pitch there by Walker Wright for the fifth K. Fincher did a great job drawing up uh, this uh, matchup for Walker Wright and uh, possibly saving his ace for another day. Walker Wright looking good this evening. But this brings up DH, Stephen Langley, number 20, coming in for... Paris, first pitch is a strike. Off-speed pitch, just stays outside. Probably should have been a strike. <laughs> well, when you've got five strikeouts, I don't think you're going to complain too much. Well, we've got our first uh, ball in play. First baseman comes under it. Boozer makes the catch. So that takes us to the bottom of the second inning where Pleasant Grove continues to lead one to zero over these Paris Wildcats. We will take another commercial break. Whether you're looking for a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV, or maybe a new or pre-owned boat or RV, care for a car wash, had a fender bender, or you need service on your vehicle, boat, or RV, we have it all when you let us exceed your expectations at Greg Orr Auto Marine and RV in Shreveport, Texarkana, and Ashdown. Shop hassle-free and always be treated like family while choosing from our sensational selection. 
in Shreveport, visit or Acura or BMW or Cadillac or Infinity and the Greg or pre-owned Supercenter in Texarkana, Mercedes-Benz of Texarkana, classic Buick GMC, classic Cadillac, classic Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, classic Kia, classic Mazda, classic pre-owned, the classic car wash, Greg or Marine and RV, Greg or Collision and classic Chevrolet and Ashdown or visit Greg or Auto.com. And just want to thank those that are watching the stream on uh, Texas County Game Day. Appreciate all those Hawk fans and probably even a few Paris fans watching tonight's action where Pleasant Grove leads 1 to 0 over the Paris Wildcats. Love and confidence. Let's go. You got it. Limbaugh is patiently waiting for. Number 23, Buck Anderson, to step up to the plate. Buck Anderson DHing for Pleasant Grove tonight. Off speed pitch stays on the high side, bringing up that first ball for Limbaugh. Working quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah, it looks like Buck was able to uh, hold back. It looked that way. We're actually on the right field line and did not look like he went past the plate to me. But I may be a little biased. Pitch a little high. Hey, back in there. Let's go. No free rides. Buck is One looking for his go. pitch to uh, drive. And based on his history, I'm assuming Fincher has given him the green light if a good one comes. Low. So we have the first Hawk hey, right. on go. the bases here in this second inning on a walk. So Buck Anderson looking at Fincher's signs. And that brings up pitcher number 10. See if he can help out his himself by uh, maybe getting a RBI here. Showing bunt, pitches a little low. Buck Anderson gets back after a stare down from the catcher. Ready three. So Walker Wright coming in uh, with a 1.43 batting average. So a bunt may be a good call here. Buck Anderson being held. Yeah! Yeah! And does yeah! get called out. Yeah! A little delay there. With Buck to get back to first base and uh, gets caught maybe looking a little bit too long before getting back to first base. So now we have empty bases for Limbaugh. That walk not going to hurt him in regards to producing any runs. A well-played bunt. And a passed ball. Gets past number eight, first baseman, Lamb. And we're going to have a play at, oh, no play at third. Walker Wright moving all the way to third base after an errant throw after a bunt. Walker Wright over there with a big smile talking to Coach Fincher. Hey, we're good. And that is going to bring up first baseman, Ty Boozer to move Walker Wright to home plate with a ball in play here. I'm pulling, I'm pulling right here. So first base is playing a little bit in third third base, basically even with the with the base. Walker Wright not taking advantage of uh, not being covered. Sneaks down the line, but a ball to Boozer. Hey, well, we strike. have You're a 2-0 and o count. So Limbaugh pitching with a runner on third base behind it, but really not paying much attention to that base runner. Nice. And that pitch is uh, being motioned outside by the umpire, so we have a 3-0 and o count. Boozer looking for his pitch. A very good pitch right down the middle for Boozer there. 
Walker Wright getting back to third base. Fincher giving a few more cues to Walker Wright to look for. Three and one here the count. And we've got time called by Boozer. Limbaugh taking a little more time than normal on that pitch. Boozer asked for time. Here's the pitch. And around a there little quick there. Pulling that even left of Coach Fincher. Coach Fincher still having some pretty good moves. So we've got a three and two count for Ty Boozer here. And we have another hit by pitch, Hawk. Boozer holding that left hand straight down as he runs to first base. So that is going to bring up uh, Brenton Clark, who has Hawks on both corners. And we're going to have a visit from head coach from Paris to the mound. I think a definitely fitting uh, mound visit right here. I mean, runners on the corners, only one out, but you have the Arkansas commit up to bat. I mean, you got to play this right. you got to execute pitches and, I mean, something that – uh, he's kind of struggled with all night, but uh, if any time it's going to matter, this is the time right now. Well, and the one thing that uh, Brenton Clark has proved is his ability to get on base. And so there's definitely going to be uh, a ball put in play here, I would think. And it's just going to depend um, a double play here. And Limbaugh is uh, getting out of here with uh, nothing hurt. So, Coach just out there to sort of calm down the nerves and maybe give some insight to the infield on what uh, what they're being called to do. Coach Fincher putting his signs out there for his players. Pearlman coaching up first base there. Hawk runners not getting too far off the bag. Nice pitch. And Clark takes a first pitch strike, watching it into the glove of the catcher. One out in the second inning. Pitch to first base. All right, good idea. And no, uh, no call there because the uh, runner gets back in time. Jared Halter eagerly looking on in the on deck circle. He'll be able to get his pound of flesh tonight. Runner goes. And a ball off of the pitcher rolls into right field but does score Walker right. Hopefully Limbaugh will be okay. Umpire is going to check on him. He does give a thumbs up. But that does give another run to Pleasant Grove, who now leads two to zero. So we've got batters hit by pitches and pitchers hit by batters so far tonight, leading to some scoring. Jared Halter up, Hawks on first and second. Limbaugh comes back with some speed, but a little low for a first ball to Jarrett Walker, or Jarrett Halter. <laughs> You're hot one. Still thinking about Walker scoring. We're used to seeing Jarrett on the mound, and Walker's on the mound tonight. Right. Hawks get a pretty good lead here. Ball crushed to the shortstop for a second good. out of the inning. Jarrett wanting that one back. Just a little wow. underneath that pitch. But that's going to bring up number 19, Spencer Browning. So Limbaugh with two outs behind him. Looks to uh, face Spencer Brown to try to get this third out for the Wildcats. Nice pitch. Off-speed pitch there right down the center for Spencer, but decides to watch that one and take the next ball to drive. Fincher with a sign to the runner on second. And another hit by pitch. So we've got four Hawks that have been hit by pitch tonight. 
And we're going to have a discussion with the umpire from the Parish Wildcats. I'm thinking the coach is trying to say that he went around, even though he was hit. I don't think that he would actually be swinging at that pitch, but uh, he may have turned to try to get uh, get out of that. And uh, I do like the fact that the umpires are working together on that call. Umpire out in the field sees it the same way. So we're looking at uh, bases loaded for Pleasant Grove Hawks. And Cade Martin golfs this one just out of play here on the right-hand side. Cade Martin calling time so he can dig in a little bit better against Limbaugh, who definitely moves pretty quick. And pass ball. The ball does come back pretty quick, but not able to uh, get the ball from his glove is Garcia. So that does bring in number 28 Ty Boozer from third base and both Hawks do advance. So we now have Pleasant Grove with two runners in scoring position. And Cade Martin looking at a one and one count. Limbaugh not paying attention, moving quickly to any of the runners. And a rip down the third base line right at Harper, who makes a good play to end the inning where Pleasant Grove puts two runs up, leads three to zero at the bottom of the second. So we will take this to the top of the third when we return. Texar is a community first credit union which has served members in and around the Texarkana area since 1951. Having three offices and employing almost 100 people, today Texar serves citizens of Cass, Bowie, Little River, Miller, Red River, and Lamar counties. Through the years, we've had many different names. From our humble beginnings as Bowie County Teachers Credit Union to where we are today. We are honored to offer our members quality service with exceptional products. We also take pride in staying one step ahead when it comes to introducing the latest and greatest in banking technology. From personal to commercial banking. And turning houses into homes. We believe in banking made easy. To make life easier for you. Back, Walker Wright continues his time on the bump tonight where he already has five strikeouts. And we're just in the top of the third here, bringing up Keaton Adamson, their second baseman, who is already starting to eye some of those pitches and see if he can't get that timing down for Mr. Wright. Cade Martin able to get his gear back on and uh, immediately calls for a throw down to second base. But wind starting to die down just a little bit. There's that play down to second base. Cade Martin heading to the mound to talk up his fellow Hawks and see if they can get through another inning without allowing any runs to these Parish Wildcats. So once again, we've got second baseman Keaton Adamson stepping into the batter's box, digging in for Wright's first pitch this inning. Spencer Browning staring down as well. So we've got a strike one here in this third inning for Walker Wright. Adamson digging in. A fastball in for a strike. So Wright is looking well with this batter 0-2. Low pitch there. Remember, outside pitch, right field, let's go. 
Show your hands. Adamson digging in. Right with the kick. Another fastball. But hit foul. Adamson doing a good job there just protecting the plate. Keep his bat alive. Moves up in the batter's box just a little bit. And still swinging just a little bit behind. Adams, Adamson being able to fend off that pitch to be able to continue on. Wright still looking very poised up there. Steps off. Didn't like something about that. So wind up. Off speed pitch. But his drop, Cade Martin picks the ball up and makes that throw to Ty Boozer where Pleasant Grove does get the first out of this third inning. Ball gets thrown around. Walker Wright steps back up on the bump where we've got first baseman Chase Lamb up to bat for the Paris Wildcats. Lamb coming in. with six stolen bases. So if he gets on base, he could be dangerous on the base path. We have one strike. Walker Wright. Another fastball swing and a miss. Walker Wright bringing some heat. And Paris is yet to uh, get ahead of that pitch. Walker Wright really inducing a lot of foul balls with that fastball tonight or just flat out misses. Fastball a little low. All right, readjust his belt. Lamb digging in deep into the batter's box. And a curveball for a swinging third strike. Four right. That brings six by my count. So now we have right fielder Pedro Mata coming up to bat, number six. With uh, excited teammates calling him on. We've got a strike one. Mata on the white line on the batter's box. Calls that one to the right side but behind him. Right, rolls the ball around to get it nice and wet before the pitch. See if he can get some extra movement on this curveball. And that was the pitch, but fouled back. Somebody's getting a free drink. <laughs> Samata tightening up those batting gloves, stepping back in. And right with a new ball. No balls and two strikes. A little high. Mata wisely holds off on swinging at that one. See what Mata decides to do here. Waiting on a pitch from right. Looks like that one is going to be fouled down the right field line. Right gets another ball for this at bat. Mata's chased a few. Been able to stay alive hitting them foul. Off-speed pitch stays a little high there. So now we have a level count at two and two. Mata swinging the bat back and forth, now set. And another foul ball. Ball being brought in from the Mata back back in right looking to deliver this third strike. And throws a ball where 
it bounces to the catcher. Hayden Martin not able to uh, keep it in front of him. But now we have a full count at three and two with two outs. And we've got heat. Kate Martin not able to grasp the ball, but throws it down to first base for that third out to Ty Boozer, where Pleasant Grove still leads 3-0 to zero going into the bottom of the third inning. We'll take another break. My name is Doug Willett. I own M&M Tire and Auto Center. We've been here for over 40 years. Uh, we're a, just a mom and pop place. We service any type of vehicle that you can think of. We do front end alignments. We've got the best front end alignment machine guys here. And we also do AC work uh, for the new Freon, which is the 1234 FY. We do that too. Plus tires, now that's the major thing. Cooper Tire employees, we're really special with them. Uh, we uh, give you 15% off, plus also you get your Goodyear employee refunds back on your tires, which is great for you. Extra value is what you get when you buy from Doug Millette. Don't worry, my guys will take care of you too. So Limbaugh remains on the bump for Paris and looking at uh, trying to get out. Three up, three down to get them back in front of Walker Wright to try to get some runs on the board, but Parrish really struggling on getting uh, any runners on base tonight. We want to thank our many sponsors. Uh, last commercial, m and Tire. I'll actually have my truck there later this week to have some brakes looked at. Very reliable. Mr. Pullet and his guys over there, m and Tire. Chase Elrod swings at a first pitch. So Limbaugh ahead with a count of 0-1. Looking to quickly work against Elrod here. And looks like we have a foul ball ripped down the first base line by Elrod. So now we have a 0-2 count. He's quick out of the batter's box to try to get down first base, but called back after the ball being fouled. Limbaugh working quick. But a high off-speed pitch. But we now have one ball and two outs. Another pitch on the high side there where Jace now is two and two. Limbaugh with the pitch. Another off-speed pitch, just a little bit on the high side. Jace Elrod works this to a three and two count. Looking to get on base any way he can. Shows bunt, pulls it back. And a Swing just to keep himself alive. Ball just a little bit on the inside, but Jace able to turn on that for a foul ball to keep that count three and two. Limbaugh looking for his call. Good. And you could not tell if that was lower outside, but Jace Elroy does work a walk. And so that's going to cause another conversation to be had on the mound. Paris Wildcoat, Wildcat coach. I believe that is J.W. Stanley in his second year as head coach for Paris. Last year, parent Paris finished fourth place in district by district final finalists last year. And uh, I think in my great wisdom that top three is probably going to be Pleasant Grove, Liberty Isle, and Paris in one of those orders. Um, so it looks like we are going to be making a change on the mound. So we've got number six, Pedro Mata, coming in from right field. And it looks like Limbaugh is going to go to 
right field or maybe center. So maybe just a switch yeah. of one position. All the outfielders are kind of meeting together, so we're not quite sure just yet. But it definitely looked like he was heading out towards the right. So we're going to get to see what Mata has. Right-handed pitcher here. Looks like he's got a long delivery, which could uh, match up well with Elrod's speed. He's actually uh, taking some steps off first base, sort of timing that delivery. So this long delivery by Mata could be uh, time for Jace Elrod to uh, get a stolen base or two. Yeah, Jace definitely knows for his speed. Hadn't had a whole lot of opportunities for stolen bases, even though he does have seven on the year. I mean, that's definitely what he was used a lot for last season. He came in and pinch ran for uh, for Cade a lot and, and – uh, was a good guy to bring in runs in those situations. Well, and towards the end of the season, he had earned a spot on, you know, on, mm -hmm. as far as to bat. His own base percentage was on the high side, and it was a lot of a lot of walks that he he would draw. Uh, so Jace with a very very good eye. So wind. Uh, I would say is negligible, but it is going out to center field where Landon West is going to have the opportunity to be the first Hawk to face Mata. Mata looking very intentional on the pitches that he is throwing for this practice period. Reaching back for the chalk. So, yes, we will see Limbaugh in right field. Here we have Landon West with the first look at Mata on the mound. And looks like Mata has pitched nine innings so far um, with ten strikeouts. So anytime you have more strikeouts than innings pitch, you're doing all right. Great bunt down the first baseline. Mata comes out and gets it, but the first baseman – does not stay on the base and advances. So we have runners on first and second for Pleasant Grove, bringing up number 23, Buck Anderson, DH. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better bunt right there. Uh, Landon was definitely taking a huge role uh, now being on varsity and starting here tonight and definitely makes his, his efforts known. Second base not being covered by Paris. Elrod. We do have a pass ball, but no hawk is moving. Garcia, quick speed to get that ball. I think there's probably a little respect on that arm with uh, already one hawk being thrown out going to third. The hawk runners back leading off again for Buck Anderson. Showing bunt again, but does pull that back. Elroy does take a few extra steps and uh, does take a quick run back to second base, but no throw. Fincher making the call with two balls and zero strikes for Buck Anderson. And we've got a show of a bunt, but pulled back with a swing, but fouls the ball off. Yeah, definitely try to catch him off with the slash there. Shows bunt and then ended up taking a hack at it, fouls it off. Brings it to a 2 1 count. Mata looking back, second base, and a bunt placed down to third base. Third baseman makes the play. So we do have a out at first base, so Harper comes up and makes a good play off of that bunt, but that does move Hawks into scoring position. So we have runners on second and third. So J Jace Elrod speedster at third with Landon West at second, bringing up pitcher Walker Wright, getting the signs from Coach Fincher. We've got one out. Could see another bunt. Uh, Walker Wright 
Wisely pulls the bat back for ball number one. Looks like we do have the corners coming in for Paris. Second and shortstop also playing in. And Walker Wright also shows bunt but pulls it back. But unable to get back around and fouls that back into the net. That takes the count to one and one. Sitting here in the third inning at the bottom with Pleasant Grove leading three to zero with runners in scoring position. With only one out in the inning. And we've got a bunt back to the pitcher. No play at first, throws it over the first baseman's head. Walker is off to second base. And number 21 scores as well. Landon West, Walker is able to move all the way around to third base before the ball is brought back into play onto the field. And that's his second trip to third off of, a, off of a pass ball. That is. You have a better memory than I do. <laughs> But I just saw Walker Wright smile, so that was about to uh, put that back in my memory here. So Mata gives up a couple of runs here. Pleasant Grove leading five to zero here in the bottom of the third, where we have first base Ty Boozer up to bat. And looks like we're gonna have Jackson Kohler coming in to pinch run for Landon West. Kohler's got a little baseball softball in his blood. He's getting some action tonight. A little off speed pitch there for Ty Boozer. Swing and a miss for Mata. Stares down at his catcher Garcia for the call. Boozer waggling, waiting for that pitch. And watches that low. Curveball comes off the table just a little soon. Off. Another off-speed pitch. Boozer making a swing and miss. We have a one and two count for Ty Boozer with Mata ahead in the count. Corner still playing in, whole infield playing in. Pitch just a little bit low, possibly outside. Boozer with a good eye there, two and two, evens up the count. Kohler steps off third. Bun is shown, pulled back. And Boozer slaps at it, going to center field. Just not deep enough, makes a good play. We do have a runner tagging up, so Kohler does get across the plate for the sixth run of the game. It's Ty Boozer with an RBI. Got Brenton Clark up to bat. And a rip up the center just on the shortstop side of second base is Brenton Clark. So he is able to uh, get on base here in the third inning where Jarrett Halter is going to be asked to continue to move him around the diamond. Just peered up and saw the sliver of the moon. <laughs> the moon's going to be very popular around here on April 8th. We're going to be able to celebrate a celebration here. See what you did there. In Texarkana. So Mata steps off the rubber. Halter steps out of the box, takes an extra look at Fincher. Clark takes a step off first. Ball one is low for Jarrett Halter. 
Signs going across the field to Brenton Clark. He takes a lead there. Jared Halter with the waggle. And the pitch. Ripped down third baseline. Just not able to outrun that hit where Pleasant Grove does get the third out of the inning where they lead 6-0 to zero after four. We'll take a quick break. Diamond Bank walks with its customers through every step of life side by side. From the first checking account in high school to the first home or business loan, Diamond Bank is committed to helping you with all of your financial needs. Diamond Bank's growth is the result of the growth of our customers, and we want to help you feel that same growth. We are proud to have the ability to give back to our local school districts, community organizations, veterans, customers, and more in a multitude of ways. Come discover the Diamond Bank difference with local people making local decisions for our local community. Stop by our current location as member FDIC and equal housing lender. We are back at the top of the fourth inning where Walker Wright remains on the bump for Pleasant Grove, and rightly so, where he has six Ks so far for tonight. Cade Martin there making a great throw to number two. And tags out the invisible runner in between innings here. So we've got uh, Juan Garcia up to bat. And so with him coming back around, that tells me that no Wildcat has made it on. Walker Wright throws that off-speed pitch, hangs it a little high there. Mata rolls his eyes looking for another pitch. And another pitch a little bit high. Walker Wright looking to bring this one down. Either force a swing or get a strike. And he does so with strike one here. Count being two and one. Walker Wright digging in a little bit. For the rubber. A little inside, but Garcia able to fight that one off. And brings the count to two and two. I think I may have accidentally called Garcia Mata here earlier. Garcia dug in and looks at a third strike. So that is the second strikeout for Mr. Garcia. So Blake Walker, left fielder, looking to be the first Wildcat to get on base tonight. A swinging miss on a fastball. Goes Blake Walker for first pitch. And a second strike fouls back. Walker eagerly taking a couple steps towards Cade Martin for that pitch. A off speed pitch just on the inside. Good eye by Walker there, not swinging at that one. And a fastball ripped into center field. Center fielder really not having to take a step at all. Elrod takes it on the first bounce and throws it back in. So Wildcats do have their first runner on first base. And so Jack Brazil has the opportunity to get a Wildcat into scoring position. But he is also a Wildcat that has struck out this evening. Does take a strike on the first pitch. Blake Walker not taking any additional steps at all after the first couple of uh, hops off first base. Pitch outside to Brazil there to even the count up to one and one. Once again, Walker only taking a few steps off first. It's going to allow Brazil to try to move him around with the bat. And there goes a rip to left field. 
West is under it and makes the catch. He gets the ball back into the infield. So that brings up the second out of this fourth inning for Walker Wright. Paris with a runner on first base. Number one, Hudson Harper, third baseman, has also struck out for the Paris Wildcats. A swinging first pitch fouls it back to take the count to zero and one. But once again, Walker just not taking any additional steps other than one or two off first. Runner is running. Three. Ball does get past Cade Martin anyway, so we do have a standing stolen base by Blake Walker, who picked the perfect time to move himself into scoring position. And so Walker has advanced himself the furthest that any Wildcat has been tonight. So Brazil has the opportunity to have a runner in scoring position, looks like we're going to take some extra time for Cade Martin and Walker to make sure that they've got their signals down since we now have a runner at second base who can peer into Cade Martin's <laughs> signal <laughs> calling. That's an Harper here, dug in. And a swinging miss for another strikeout for Walker Wright. That is going to be the, take us into the bottom of the fourth where Pleasant Grove still leads six to zero. Here at Local Habit Coffee Company, we are true coffee connoisseurs and the area's only third way coffee shop. We are excited as football and fall rolls around to introduce this year's fall drink lineup. We have an all organic homemade pumpkin spice latte, a delicious s'mores latte, and finally, a smoked maple bourbon cortado that can only be described as fall in a cup. No matter what your preference, you can get your dose of fall right here at Local Habit. We cannot wait to see you in one of our shops, and remember to go make something good happen. Mata is being asked to stay on the mound for the Wildcats. Faces a deficit by six runs. Looking to get these Hawks three up, three down to get his Wildcats back on the offensive side of the inning. So Spencer Browning is going, is going to be the first Hawk that takes his motto this inning. The errant throw down to second, and that ball is going to the wall. Yeah. Hawk fans come out as they have. But for those that are joining us on the stream, definitely appreciate your willingness to uh, support Texas Game Let's Day go. and more importantly, these young men playing tonight. Are looking to deliver this pitch. And Spencer. Takes that one high for a first ball. Spencer Browning looking to advance on a hit rather than being hit. And a rip to left field going back. And this one is out of here by Spencer Browning over the left field wall. Takes a low five from Coach Fincher. Spencer Browning with the first homer in district play. Extending this Hawk lead to seven to zero against these Wildcats. Got some. In the parking lot, we had headlights shining right towards the field. Please turn your headlights off. Got some uh, 
Eager Hawk fans trying to uh, Martin up to bat. And with the excitement that Spencer just caused, I would imagine Cade wants to one up. Takes this pitch low for the first ball. So you want to one up, but you don't want to get complacent at the same time. You still want to have your same approach, not get too eager to hit a ball and, and drive it. Still play your game of baseball at the same time. Well, and he's showing great patience there. Two very good pitches close to the strike zone. But he is ahead 2-0. and oh, So he is probably going to have a pitch or two that he can drive coming up here soon. Left fielder definitely playing deep. Another ball for Cade Martin. Very disciplined coming into his at bat. And left fielder is giving up the line to Cade Martin. A swing and fouls it straight back into the net. Cade Martin now sitting at a three and one, still with his advantage. Looking for his pitch to drive. Mata with the pitch. Low. And Cade Martin goes down to get it to bring up a three and two count. So when you just wonder what pitch Mata is going to throw here, whether it be fastball or off speed here. A little off speed on the outside edge where Cade Martin does advance to first base after a walk. And so that is going to bring up speedster Jace Elrod. Where we have no outs. And with Jace's speed, do we see a bunt down first base? Harris is going to uh, attempt to keep Cade at first base here. Showing bunt, but uh, Jace pulls that back after seeing it's going to be a little high. So we have a ball on the first pitch here. It's not very often we get to see Cade run the bases, him being the catcher. Well, there's so no, there's no outs. Enjoy, yeah, definitely no enjoying outs. it. Senior year. And Cade does get thrown at, but gets back in time. Chase Lamb at first base, covering the plate. A bunt down by Elrod, back to Mata. Ball is thrown to Lamb. So we do have an out, but Cade Martin is moved to second base. So Elrod doing what was asked to him, and that is to advance the runner. Uh, ball was hit a little, little, little hard back to the pitcher. But Mata, very, very poised, decides to take it to first base rather than trying to throw out the lead runner. But that does bring up Landon West, left fielder. Up to bat. Coach Fincher putting the signs out there. No one covering second for Paris. And Landon West. Does think twice about letting that one go, but we do have a called strike. Adamson walking behind second base just to let Martin know that he's there. And right ball is on the dirt. Throw it third, but third baseman is not able to keep it in his glove. Cade Martin there safe after a dropped ball that probably did beat him by a step or two. So that does bring West a runner to third base to allow him to possibly drive in with just one out in the inning here at the bottom of the fourth with only one out. Job, See JC. what West has to do here. And a swinging foul ball for West. Garcia doing a real good job looking 
and getting as big as he can to protect that plate from any pass balls. Cade Martin already proving that he's willing to get his uniform dirty. Probably wouldn't mind sliding into home. And West swinging at one a little bit high to protect himself. Keeps the count at one and two. As Mata's going to have to think of something different to uh, get West out with other than that pitch. A little mind game here showing Bunt with two strikes. Does pull it back. And Go! the pitch is on the top of the strike zone. Very, very gracious call there by the umpire for a third strike. And uh, looks like he does get handed some balls by Buck Anderson. So Anderson, he gets the opportunity to uh, put a ball in play and with two outs. That does allow for Cade Martin to get pitch run again. And a rip down the left field line goes Buck Anderson that does bring in a run. There is going to be a play. Oh, Buck Anderson does stop, stays at first base. So Buck Anderson does have an RBI for himself tonight with a rip down the left field line. And didn't get a chance to call out Christian May's number, but that was number seven that pinch ran for Mr. Cade Martin there to put the eighth run on the board for Pleasant Grove. Sitting in the fourth inning where we do have a runner on first, Buck Anderson after ripping it into left field. And so the current winning pitcher is up to bat, Mr. Walker Wright. Coach Fincher giving him the signs across the field to Buck Anderson on first base. And Walker takes that one for a strike. Evens up the count, one and one. Buck Anderson not taking too many extra strides there off first base. Lamb doing a good job holding him on. Mata watching him. And so we've got Mata with the pitch. Off-speed pitch for a strike where we now have a count of one and two. Mata ahead, going to be able to take the pitch that he wants to deliver here. Walker Wright showing bunt, but pulls it back. Buck Anderson runs in a swing. The shortstop was going over to cover the throw from the catcher, and that takes him out of the play. So a very, very... Weak hit ball moves Walker on to first base. That's where you uh, hit them where they ain't. Yeah. Take hits however you can get them. So Ty Boozer up to bat with two Hawks on the bases. Where we've got Buck Anderson on second, Walker right on first with two outs. First base is playing inside the runner. And a high pitch by Mata there. Ty Boozer just stares it down. So Ty Boozer heading the count early. One ball, zero strikes. Mata elects to get a little chalk on his hands. Anderson taking a step off. Pitch is high. Striking the zone, let's go. We've got two balls and zero strikes here. Ty Boozer looking to extend this Pleasant Grove lead. It currently sets at eight to zero. A pass ball. Looks like we are going to have Hawk runners advancing. Looks like that was a curveball that landed just at the back of the plate. And uh, Garcia just not able to keep that in front of him to keep the runners from advancing. So Ty Boozer now with both runners in scoring position. Digs in deep in the batter, batter's box. And takes a called strike on a 3-0 and count. Had no intention on swinging on that regardless of where it is. But looking to put this ball into play with a three and one count with Hawks in scoring position with two outs. 
And that pitch is high, so we're going to have bases loaded for Brenton Clark. And that is going to require a visit from Coach Stanley from Harris to talk that over. Mata listening in and uh, taking in what the coach is sharing. <coughs> so Brenton Clark trying to pick where he's going to uh, place this hit. See if he stays within himself or sees this as an advantage to put four more on the board. Got the ball back in play. Motto with the pitch delivery. Yes, sir. And Brenton Clark looking at a first pitch strike. Just on the outside call there. Brenton Clark steps back in. Stop, calls it off, but misses the play. Brenton Clark wisely had already rounded first base and was at second base quickly. So Pleasant Grove scores two to take it to 10 to zero. And we've got Hawks in scoring position again. Coach Fincher going out to uh, gather up his hitting gloves from Brenton Clark. And number 10, Jack Brazil, just not able to clamp down on that ball to get them out of the inning. You've got to start thinking and talking 10-run rule as we are approaching the fifth inning here. But Pleasant Grove still the chance to add more on foul. That sounded really nice. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes, it did. I don't think by any chance Ty Boozer was uh, napping over there, but that definitely uh, increased his blood pressure. Oh, yeah. Jarrett here takes a high pitch to take it to one and one. Looks like that was either a curveball or a slider trying to come in and just fall in the zone right there on and the corner. And it was close. Yeah, it was, it was close. It was a good pitch. So may come back to that a little later against Halter here. And that one stays high. So Halter takes the count to two and one. Back-to-back -back balls by Mata. So Tep steps off the rubber, taking a little extra time, rearranging his pant leg. And Brenton Clark has been getting a little, little brave coming off of second base here. The last pitch or two, no one is wanting to keep him on second at all. And another high pitch where Jarrett has to get out of the way from. Go, Pedro. Back in there. Let's go. So we're looking at a three and one pitch for Jarrett Halter. Most likely going to get a pitch here that's either not close at all or one that he can drive. And that is a pitch that he could drive, but just not able to get ahead of it. Mata bringing a little heat there, causing Jarrett to have to defend his plate. Continue this at bat. Jarrett showing bunt, but most likely going to pull that back quick like he does. And we've got a walk by Jarrett Halter that is going to load the bases up for number 19, Spencer Browning, whose last at bat sent one over left field. This inning, too. And so Pleasant Grove looking with bases loaded for Spencer Browning to go back to back. This one being a grand slam if that was the case. Takes a pitch inside. Once again looking for a pitch to drive. Is ahead of the count, one and zero. Oh. All Hawk runners. Being respectful to Mata, not taking it off too far. 
And another rip going to left field. Left field is backing up again to the wall. Makes the play but does it over his head. May have hit the wall. Spencer Browning going to third base. Going to be able to have a stand-up triple. Clears the bases for Pleasant Grove. Minus himself. So now we have a 13-0 ball game. Spencer Browning really getting a piece of that. I think maybe just the uh, coldness uh, probably uh, kept that ball in, but a good rip. Yeah, not, not enough wind to carry that one. Yeah, wind. The flags are basically dropping straight down, so the wind that he had at the previous at bat is wasn't there to help him. But either way, puts three more RBIs in the book on him. So now we've got number 24, Caden Martin, in – to do some damage for Pleasant Grove here. And a rip to center field. Center fielder getting underneath this. And we do have the third out of the fourth inning, but not before Pleasant Grove takes it to 13-0. And looks like Pittsburgh or the, the Paris Wildcats are going to have to put a few runs on the board to continue this game. We're going to take a quick break. commercial services, electrical panel installation, circuit breaker installation, led by master technician Jay Strickland, and multiple specialty services. Meet Tony Langford Roofing, your trusted name in roofing solutions. Decades of experience and top-notch service. Passionate about your home safety, we treat every roof like our own. From repairs to full installations, we've got your home covered. Upgrade your roof with our variety of styles and materials. For roofs that last long, choose Tony Langford Roofing. We've got you covered. Well, here recently, I've had the opportunity to take advantage of the services of our last two advertisers had Mr. Langford, or not Mr. Langford, but somebody else climbed on my roof and did did, did some work after some uh, wind uh, loosened up some um, at a home that my family owns with my brother and dad, and uh, we're hoping to get that bad boy finished up tomorrow. They started the install today with the trenches and did not cut a single water pipe or electric <laughs> line or gas line, so I just... <laughs> That's that's a that's a win in it my It must opinion. be nice. You know. Living in Wake Village the past week, that was not fun. <laughs> well, you know we we take we take uh, electricity and running water and things like that for granted until it doesn't uh, occur when we flip a switch or turn a faucet yeah. on. But um, if if you're needing any electrical work done, uh, give Jay Strickland a call with live wire and and if you need some roofing work done, uh, Tony Langford and his crew would be more than happy to uh, throw a few shingles on there for you. So we're in the top of the fifth where Walker Wright is looking to finish this game off and trying to uh, make this game last a little bit longer is going to be Tyler Day, number seven, center fielder for the Paris Wildcats. Digs in deep in the batter's box. First pitch this inning and a strike. Swinging strike by Walker right there. Brings some heat. Cade Martin bounces it back to him. But Walker makes a good play on the ball. Go T-Day. Second pitch of this inning. Shows bunt. Ball is going to have some backspin. Lands foul but remains foul. And so Walker Wright going to have the opportunity to uh, be ahead of this count 0-2 against Tyler Day. Hey. Yep. Uh, why coach puts him in center field? Pitch a little high. Mm. Walker is was wanting that call. Took a few extra strides off the bump, thinking that he would get that one. But okay, definitely thought it was. He was trying to go around, around the horn with it. Takes the count to one and two. And Pep in his step. After the evening he's had behind the plate. And so now we have Stephen Langley coming in DHing tonight. 
Off-speed pitch and a very late swing there by Langley. Good, good pitch there by Walker Wright. Off-speed. Second off-speed curveball there. Number 20 swinging and missing. Walker Wright probably. But the count remains zero balls and two strikes. Once again, we're in the top of the fifth inning. Pass ball here, evens the count two and two, where Pleasant Grove leads 13 to zero in the first district game. So I'll take that back, we're just count of one and two. And uh, Walker You can see the future, that's what, that's what was yes. going on. <laughs> and all of a sudden we have a full count. And I don't think Walker Wright has had one of these tonight. Maybe one. I think he's had maybe once, but. And a swinging strikeout for Walker Wright. Second in this fifth inning. Walker Wright is one out away from his first district win. And Coach Fincher coming out to uh, have a chat with Walker Wright. He's going to take the ball. Coach Fincher just did not want him to uh, exceed tonight. And this brings up Mr. Lance Jackson. Jackson. His first pin, so therefore I didn't mention that he was in the bullpen earlier. But he's not coming in cold. He has taken a few uh, pitches down in the bullpen there. Just wondering if we may have a little Bull Durham where we throw fastball, fastball, and fastball. <laughs> I think what ended up happening with Walker on that last at bat, he started 0-2, definitely saw that the uh, the batter had a, had a tendency to swing and uh, was ready to swing at kind of anything. And so was kind of throwing it around, seeing if he could get him to chase again, and then when it mattered the most, got that final out, and that was all that mattered. Well, great Walker, night by Walker on the night. Yeah, no, Walker looked great. Um, you know, it's you, you, you've, you've got you to know that uh, Coach Fincher has a lot of trust in Walker, putting him out here at the first district game. And so we're going to see if uh, Jackson here can uh, finish this game out. Lance didn't get to play at all last year, uh, coming off of an injury, and so definitely trying to gain his momentum back this season and working on trying to get back to usual. Well, and just just such a great athlete, you know he you know he likes to compete, so it's going to be fun watching him this year on the mound. And there's the first fastball. A little bit different slot and a little bit taller than uh, Walker Wright, so uh, definitely going to be a new sight for Mr. Adamson there. And so we've got uh, pitch number two that was also a fastball as a strike. And we're looking at three pitches in a row. Mr. Jackson retires the side, and that is going to lead to a Pleasant Grove 13-0 opening win in district play against the Paris Wildcats, where Walker Wright had, I believe, 10 strikeouts tonight. And Pleasant Grove looking to start this district out with a W. And so I know uh, Coach Fincher has to be happy with what he saw tonight out of the Pleasant Grove Hawks. Absolutely. I think your, your two players of the game can uh, get a uh, opening day run rule win. Yeah, you can't beat a 13-0 win against one of the teams that you know is going to be top three in district. And so Pleasant Grove is going to be able to stay at home this coming Friday when they play Sulphur Springs at 7 o'clock. So clear your evening out, take your significant other out for a dinner date, and then uh, come watch Pleasant Grove play at home against Sulphur Springs. We will uh, end this broadcast with a 13-0 win, Pleasant Grove Hawks over the Paris Wildcats.
behind the arm of Walker Wright and the bat of Spencer Browning. Good night, everybody.